Pianot. What what are we doing here with? I mean, this, so we got three melee heroes. We have no natural. Yeah. Uh, it's Monkey King has stealer. some natural mobility. Start our life. Everything comes in cycles. Start our start our life stealer, but sure, but but with what what's with what secret already has on board, doesn't start our need a blink dagger. Remaining. And Five yeah, blink reliant, blink first reliant heroes have played so badly in the I last couple just, patches. I I think they're fine. It's just that if you don't have non blink required initiation yeah. tools in do, addition to your hero, do they? You're putting yeah. I don't think I don't think and if if Monkey King's well, a farming core, I don't think he can play that. It, it's it's okay. a lot of rest. single target, yeah. and you have the. Uh, I the, would um, I would point out that Jerex plays a lot of monkey. So they may have I already thought. I already though. thought that Seb would have seen this Kunker and gone, "Yeah, that's they're baiting us mid. We'll pick a Monkey King, which is good against the Kunker, but they'll think we're going to play Monkey King mid, and we're not. So they bait each other. You have to be pretty. You have to be I, careful not to outline the next yourself, level so. mind games. I'm telling you right now, Monkey King. I mean okay. that that could which be correct, but I don't think they're it's they're as bad. They left with the mid. I left the left with the mid to pick. Yeah, you can can I have CW? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like what is this world I'm so, in so, right now with Seb? Okay, <laughs> wait a minute. So if, drafting. If Paul's theory is correct, if they're left with a mid to pick, it's surely Quasox both against the mm. number three. Yeah, like so. So we'll see because I think I think if OG is left with a mid to pick, it's a and snap they found, pick a, they found a trail. So they think that this is a, they think that that Monkey King is a Jerex Monkey King well, as well. It could also be a support yeah. slaughter. Like we just no. don't really know. I, I think, I think, so, it's I think support so they found the trail because they roles, thought that was going to be tops and zero. Roles really don't matter as much as they used to. It's That's about correct. hero compositions. Yep. Like I, I I look at drafts like you don't like the roles don't matter. You can pick these super high value heroes like Kunkka, like Brew, and just make them your five just because they're so yeah. they're just so good to have yeah. in a draft. They they matter, but the the ideal farm distributions now are so much flatter. Yeah. So it, it's you're right, there's so much less. This, this could be a double but a double bluff, by the way. So they pick Kunk and make OG think I'm that little, it's a uh, We're going Kunk. way too deep. No, no, no. I'm OG, worried, OG though. think that they think that it's a bluff. So they, they do the monkey But that's what I'm worried that OG, OG are doing. I'm worried that they're, that they're trying this mind yeah. game and they and they end up with maybe, a set of four heroes that doesn't play that well. Maybe they're the four just heroes drafting. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Kyle. Anyway. <laughs> what no, see, look, look at Seb's face. He knows this is a mind game. He knows. What? The whole kunk of baited Monkey King. Uh, yeah. did, the, that relationship isn't even that bring bad. It, bring it on. They, they, they <laughs> bring play it into on. each other. And if this proves to be true, you're hosting the next segment. And Red, I'm doing he's kind of right. <laughs> <laughs> but that, even if you, even if it's a support monkey king, the the causation does not imply yeah. correlation or correl yeah other oh, way around. Right. Oh, okay. 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 Hello. I'm, I'm what have you been watching the Matrix <laughs> of the weekend? OG, turn to pick. Troll gets banned. Yeah. 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 So. Okay. Wow. Well, what do you there know? You go. Just an Good oracle. Monkey. Crazy. It was <laughs> all, all of that fill just for them to take a support, and what do you know? It's actually a Thompson it. Monkey King. <laughs> I never would have expected that, Paul. Maybe you should sit on that side of the See, desk. See, that's for now. why I'm here, and you're there. Thank that's why they pay you the big bucks. Well, you that was pretty. That was a softball. Okay. <laughs> I'm that just I'm just being general, Carl. At the start of the first day, that's all. Okay. So, I appreciate okay, it. If that had come in the other way around, <laughs> we were so screwed. <laughs> Love that. Oh, that's so good. All that's right. the well, Jeej. That's... Hey. So now, now Lifestealer has to go to win radiance, a game. Yes. Right? Well, well, Lifestealer has to go rating against, against PL, and I just don't think the, he's The problem time. is, yeah, you have no actual kill potential on this PL. So the thing is, you have a window. OG like, can win the game once the Slaughter Lifestealer get, like, level 20 plus. Right. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, sure, PL, you still have PL problems. So this is back to, to, to um, Alan's point of the later it goes, the better it is for OG. Sort uh, of. But the thing is, PL is going to be, like, that item ahead yeah. and have, like, Eventually, the win condition on lock. And you're literally, late, your late game comes in when he's six slotted, and now you're catching up. But I'm, I'm going to go back to one point, though. How does, o, how does OG make plays without a Blink Dagger and Slark? Yeah, ex you can't kill PL. It's already hard enough to kill Ember. You have okay. the utility now of Kunkka Xing people back to base, like come back to the lane full HP. Right, so your quickly, mobility... Because we're running out of time. Oh, Secret's uh, going to win. And they're going to abuse your mobility, and, and it's going to be really nice. Mobility, spot. Secret. Secret uh, for both of these two um, reprobates on the panel. Uh, time to head to another couple of very interested parties who I'm sure are dying to bring you the opening game of ESL 1 Katowice Gents. Yeah, we're massively looking forward to this yeah. one. And Red, I, I gotta say, like, you've started off ESL 1 really, really well because you've got Thanks. both Nahaz and Kyle to wrap up quickly. <laughs> How? I just tell them to shut up, mate. That's all I'm doing.
I'm yeah. like, you know, like Shiva's like the headmistress, I'm the headmaster. Yeah, you're, you really put the dumb in Dumbledore. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gents, it's all yours. <laughs> Take it away, please. Oh, I'm loving the spice that Kyle's got today. Salty, too, over there. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if, uh, I am honestly not sure if, if Kyle and Alan are going to survive the weekend together. Yeah, they got another panel later on. Like, I think tomorrow they got another panel. So, hey, tune in for that panel. <laughs> Why watch anything else? Watch when Murder you know, Live. You, 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 you watch the bloodbath here at ESL 1. But it's not inside the cave. It's over on the panel. But let's actually look at the game, Cap. The panel was bouncing a little bit. And what a surprise they're saying. Secret has a, has a good draft. Um, PL's always going to be an item ahead. How do you feel? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I couldn't quite follow the mind games that... Uh, uh, that both Alan and uh, and Paul were going down there. That's they good. were going to some some deep stuff, but the the, the only real mind games was Kunkka was picked up. We chose a Monkey King. All right, we're gonna swerve that. We're gonna have Kunkka now be a three position. Ember Spirit's gonna go mid. Honestly, Kunkka feels like a strong enough hero right now that you don't you can. <laughs> Thirty seconds to battle. Battle begins. Maybe, maybe for you. Yeah, oh, no, hey, I'm yeah, back too. I'm yeah, back, back too. So I, I kind of want to drag Cap back because I'm sitting here and I got to have the wonderful spiel of Cap. Of, oh yeah, of, I just I just kept analyzing he, he just in case just, it was going out. He, I had no he idea. He broke the game down absolutely perfectly. Yeah, I predicted every single movement that's going to happen in 40 minutes. The problem is, Toby, that's a that's like a superpower that you can only use once. Yeah. So I I can't repeat repeat oh, it unfortunately. Damn it. Summary, uh, live steal against Radiance, and good luck to him. Uh, yeah, there's, they, the, the, the problem TLDR. is going to be this last pick, Phantom Lancer, right? Secret did a great job with this last pick. Um, life Stealer very likely is going to have to go Radiance to try and deal with this. Um, they still have, like, a really solid duo in Life Stealer Slardar. I do like the fact that they dodged. Uh, they have the Phantom Lancer not matched into the Slardar lane. Slardar is really tough to lane against uh if you can actually enable him which is what og is doing here with this oracle in this lane um he applies so much pressure to melee cores because of his bash it's just like it's very much like chaos knight where you're just like i know that i can right click you and you can't do anything about it i know i can attack you and you can't fight me back because of the guaranteed bash or with chaos knight right now the, the guarantee so they switch that around. They're going to have Zyg up here in this top lane. Nisha is probably going to have a better bottom again. Life Stealer, who obviously they can't really go on this Phantom Lancer. You can stop a ganger away whenever you get this. Yeah. You just saw I ILTW just trying to get a little aggressive underneath the tower. Zai, oh, he's actually not going to be hitting that torrent. So Seb does not feel the desire to keep chasing on. Chasing on. But yeah, we did see uh, Life Stealer just trying to push underneath the tower and look at the PL, but that's all he can really do in the lane. It doesn't function too nicely for him. Uh, how do you like the mid lane matchup? Normally, Monkey King's melee on melee uh, kind of favors the Monkey King. How does it work against this Ember Spirit, especially with the small changes to his slider fist? Mid one can be a little bit more uh, maneuverable against Thompson. Yeah, you were talking about that. The slide of fist, the, the change that happened. Uh, there's God, a lot actually more. got that. And then up top lane, Part B trying to stay alive with the brain save. He got just enough life to then die. Uh, Seb still able to get the last punch in. We were looking at the two right lanes, however, because at the same time, mid one then just got himself a solo kill over on tops, and it was getting very aggressive in his face. Yeah, the... <laughs> you usually don't see this out of, like, a Monkey King spammer like Thompson, uh, just kind of overestimating the, the power of him being able to get that Jingo Mastery next now win that man fight, but another kill on side. Yeah, easy chain stunt when you think about it. 
Like, Oracle just sets you up for the cross. Dev's gonna get two attacks in. And with the, uh, with the Enfeeble just slowing the attack speed down, it's almost like the counter to the Bash of the Deep. Uh, being able to get, get up those four charges nice and quick. But Seb still timed it nicely. Bottom lane, uh, Live Stealer in a lot of trouble. Actually gonna get picked up by Yapsaur and thrown down. He uh, is just kind of caught out. Doesn't doesn't level Rage. Went two points in the Feast instead. The last patch did buff up the Phantom Rush. So he's no even tail? stronger in the initial laning phase. And you could see they're just tearing oh. this lane up. No tail walked back into the lane. So underneath Yapsaur and Nisha. And Nisha was very happy just to Phantom Rush him down and find the kill. Yeah, this is definitely not the start that OG wants. And it just continues with Seb to die up on the top lane. It's a heavy amount of range damage you get from that Tidebringer level 2 and the Brain Sap level 2. So when you think you've got a lot of life, you really do not. Yeah, and there's not a whole lot that Oracle can do to protect against that. You've got pure damage, a lot of physical damage burst, unfortunately. Even if he did have the levels in Phaetidic, he can't protect much. Thompson's Revenge. Oh, mid one, oh. slide of fist at 10 HP. Thompson was ready for the swing, but it just doesn't work for him. Honestly, this is fine, though. This is before the Ember Spirit has his level six, so he's still gonna have to go back to base and TP in. Uh, sometimes just being able to wound someone enough that they have to go back to the fountain can still win you that lane space. Uh, you're seeing a lot lately that same goes with this offlane scenario. They're starting again over on Puppy, but Puppy played it nicely. He put the Enfeeble over on Slada so he couldn't get these chain attacks. Even though Seb was waiting on that fourth attack of Bash of the Deep just to keep hitting into the Bane, maybe they have enough, forcing an extra TP support to come to the top lane. And it's mid one. They've dragged in the mid laner of Team Secret and Yapsaw around the back. Four players from Team Secret all move over. They'll get the kill on Jirax. Seb doesn't have a TP, so he's kind of caught on the wrong side of the tracks. Looking to play around with mid one. Dangerous thing to do when the five minute bounty runes were just contested and Rubik looking for the body block couldn't get it Doesn't have telekinesis. So Seb will get away I love watching mid one play in this current patch with the the prevalence of the five minute bounty runes um, A lot of mids are doing this that they rotate out of their lane They go and try and get a kill in the side lanes and also secure the bounties It's a great kind of one-two punch mid one I feel is the one who's leading the way on this I feel like every single time I'm watching a secret game He is always willing to rotate out of his lane nice and early help his team secure those side lanes help his team secure those five minute bounty runes and you could tell like it always just allows secret even if the laning phase is a little rocky at first like it just turns around on like one of those those kills on uh, a side lane core and then you get the five minute bounties as well yeah they always find these attacks when you've got the objective behind it too like it's team secrets i wouldn't say key to success you can leave that for the pound to argue about uh mid one looking to get a lot of farm out and yeah gonna have to protect him this invis Oracle try to come up and cause some problems. Thompson's also done the rotation in, so underneath the shrine that just got popped from mid one, he'll searing chains and try and keep Thompson away, but they're calling out the stack already. They need this extra farm to get into the monkey king. If PL's gonna be an item in front, a stack like this will allow Thompson to really keep up with them. And he is now number one in the net worth thanks to that stack. Hilariously enough, second on the net worth is actually the Kunker. Zai has had a terrific time on top lane. Yeah, he's done very well for himself. It's one of those rare times the enfeeble change from uh, attack damage to attack speed, like 90% of the time, you were like, damn it, I would much rather be able to take away someone's attack damage, but this is one of those rare scenarios where the attack speed actually works out uh, much more to your favor, as you were saying with uh, the Bash and the Deep stacks. Yep. And that's where Seb just has to rely on everything, like, like, rely on Slytherin Crush once again. Yeah, that, was, that doesn't feel natural to say. No tails move to the top lane. Jirax <laughs> is going to come with him too. While well, Yamso is wrapping around on bottom lane, they won't have a crack at the life stealer. He just rage TPs out. The damage is almost enough to get the kill. He didn't even TP all the way back to base. He TP to the tier three tower. That's how fast he can move his fingers. Thompson has to go into mischief. The slap down gets us done a little bit of extra life steal, but nah. It's That's still the really kill for kill. Zai, who claims him. That's super important because of all the space that mid one was buying, right? He needed to be able to get a kill on Thompson, who was so far ahead of him. Good job by Puppy once again. Like these rotations of these cores will open up a lane for a support to be able to get solo experience. Most of the time it's going to be mid. You see this a lot with mid one rotating around. They'll plant one of their supports to be able to get level six in that mid lane. It's very common in this current meta where the uh, the mid laners oftentimes have to have an earlier impact on the side lanes than you've seen in the past. With Toby. It's just kind of funny to watch like both the supports of OG rotate towards the top lane, but then as Thompson underneath the tier one tower, 
playing around with two heroes getting aggressive it's like he's going again like he's underneath the tier one tower mid one put a defensive spirit up on the up on the hill so topson can't easily chase it but he's waiting for the fourth stack and then like, he's not even gonna wait for the fourth let's the third click and then just jumps away that's why Thompson. Wow, okay. Wow. He's going in real what? deep. Double TPs. Searing chains. Thompson needs to get himself away from this. With the, even with the Faith Boost, it won't be enough speed or will it. Slide of Fizz's back off cooldown, but the Searing chains is not in he four seconds. He'll have oh, it. No. Thompson, what happened? He got attacked. The Flame Guard, he didn't jump up. Puppy, Yap saw him in one, all chasing down Thompson. Boundless strike in six seconds. He wants to jump away, but the only thing that gives him elevation is gonna be Yapsaw's pickup with the telekinesis. Meanwhile, up on top lane, Zai being attacked by three. He's worth the hell of a lot, but they've still got to get through him. Double braces is hard work. Another crush. Is there more damage? They'll dodge the torrent. Here comes the Illuminate Blast. Nortel will claim the kill. I just want to point out, yes, Zai died, but he did make the read that Zeb was going to try and dodge his torrent, so he placed it kind of behind him where he thought Zeb would actually dodge into the torrent. It was pretty smart, but unfortunately it was enough to actually save his life. Secret still up uh, a decent chunk of net worth right now in this current meta. I don't know, Toby, if you've been watching some of the games lately, but it just feels like this patch, 721 and even 721B, the laning phase is so important. The team that walks away with a 2 or 3k advantage, they just naturally build on it. Uh, the combination of stat items, the earlier Midas's that's gonna happen as a result, and then, you know, these offlaners that pick up these team fight items, it's just all snowballs together, where a team that has a laning phase advantage feels like they have like a 70% chance to win the game from there. That's why you look for your comeback mechanics. Slada, or look to do the same thing up on top. The jump down, try to stop Bane from getting into it. Thompson, nice mischief, trying to dodge the attack in from Puppy, but this slow attack on Thompson, he just can't get his four stacks over on Puppy. Seth will crush him down once again, so maybe the Bane, yeah, he will die. The team secret. It just seems like such an effort from OG to find the kill. Nisha is attacking on bottom lane, going under the T1 tower, looking to chase down Notel. ILTV can at least slow him down with the open wounds into relative safety under the tier one. Nisha, I think was just hoping to be able to force No-Tail into using his ultimate at least, but No-Tail was kind of patient, knew he would survive. Nice catch with the Torrent side. He's going to get a lot of damage in here. He does with a tiebringer, but it's not enough to get the kill onto Thompson. They put down the Will-O-Wisp, dragging back Kunky. He was just in the edge with the blinding light. He'll be pushed back into it as well. Now pick it off as there's three players from Team Secret looking to push with this catapult wave. Secret just always willing to move their cores around. Think about how many times Zai has moved into this mid lane, mid one, moving up to top. Oh, Puppy. He's got Fiend's Grip available, but it's Zai who's the isolated one. That's who the life steal is moving towards, but then Bane just jumps into the back lines, kills off Thompson. It's core for core at the moment. It will be. Yep, mid one. Maybe in a little bit more trouble as Jurex gets a small hold and then nukes him down. Puppy's on the run as well, and Team Secret, you brought a large amount of players to this fight, but that may mean a large amount of casualties as Bane, you can brain sap, you can enfeeble, you can try and slow down the attacks of, of OG, but when they got four players there, they eventually, through War of Attrition, get through Team Secret. They were doing a really good job creating a lot of space. They didn't have to worry about rotating down to that bottom lane too much because they got the laning phase matchup, the Phantom Lancer versus the Life Stealer. So they're just roaming between top and mid. It generally just puts pressure on OG. They can't really focus on that bottom lane. And yes, it has been creating space for this Phantom Lancer to get top net worth, but a little bit too heavy, heavy casualties there for, uh, for Secret losing their Ember Spirit who you know, it's already roaming around so much that he's not the highest in net worth. Uh, I'm actually just loving that heat map. Just, yeah, PL, never leave the bottom lane. Always continuously farm. Radiance Giving him a decent advantage, even over Hand of Midas, wielding live stealers. And we'll see just how uh, the build goes from ILTW. Like, like how does he even approach this? Well, you got the Hand of Midas, you got Injection Money. The panel was saying you're looking towards the Radiance. But I'm also wondering, like, is there a stopgap? Is there another item he wants to go before he reaches that? Yeah, phase boots. Uh, sometimes you see, like, these phase boot drums build before you go for your big item. Um, I'm not sure if that's necessary for this, though. Mid one. Initiation's finally coming in, but out goes mid one.
very defensive spirit, but this does isolate Zai as well as Puppy. Mid one's managed to move himself back towards the fight. Jirax has to use the false promise onto himself because Yamsaw moved over, and Yamsaw is ready to fight as well. He's got purifying flames, so maybe he can get a little bit more damage, but no tell. The ulti is already back up again. They're all walking towards the light, the dangerous place to especially when Topsy gets a three-man slap down. Five players all locked in that Willow Wisp. Zai will finally fall with the Illumin Spam and the Crush from Seb. He'll create enough space and then Stop Zai that a second script. after for the Fiend script from Puppy. They just come free. Thompson, he'll go down and they're moving forward. Yapsaw ready to fight, but not enough mana to actually hold Jirax in position. And it won't matter when Jirax walks back into them and they've got mana again. Uh, yep, goodbye. Yeah, this is why you see that meta not too long ago of these mid kunkas building into Radiance because they just last so long into a team fight. And you saw it there, OG took so long to be able to focus side down. A really sick play by Thompson where he managed to dodge the X there with the, uh, the mischief. But it's, again, still wasn't enough. The combination of Enfeeble slowing down the attacks of the Slardars and, and the Monkey Kings not being able to get their stacks up, them taking so long to be able to bring down this tanky Kunkka, it, it just allows so much space for Nisha and Midwan to be able to clean, come in, clean up. Not to mention, Toby, we're, we're, we're going to see it eventually. Have you seen, have you been lifted up by a, uh, a Rubik who has maxed out Telekinesis and has maxed out Arcane Supremacy yet? I, I have not. Luckily. Okay, it feels. I'll let you know, Toby. It I, feels like it lasts forever. You're just it, hovering in the air for a long time. Does it feel time. like Shaman Shackle? It kind of does. Yes, it kind of feels like that. And then, Toby, it's going to get even worse when somebody gets enfeebled and they get telekinesis. You're just going to be up there for years. All right, so never ending control factors make for a very fun and non boring game. Mid one back far enough that Thompson's jump won't be able to attack him, but it will be Jirax in a little bit of trouble. Thompson gonna go into the Wukong command with a little bit of extra help with the slap down. Oh, it doesn't actually whiff. connect on anybody, and then he walked out of the ultimate, allowing Puppy to move forward. Ember Spirits already jumped back to the defensive spirit, and they don't want anything to do with this. OG needs to get the hell out of here. They've got no tier one town to retreat out to. Instead, it's Seb just trapped. Maybe he's not that trapped. They jump in, looking for the hits over on top of Zai, and with the Willow Wisp, they hold him in position. Thompson, he's got the buff up, now moves attention over towards Puppy. He'll nightmare him up. They pick him, pick him back out of it, and the hit. It's a perfect slap down. Puppy will fall. Yapsaw, will he actually follow? You know Thompson wants to find the kill, but TP support's coming in, and it's the big one. It's the Phantom Lancer. Look to find mid one he actually doesn't get in yeah, he gets the root over on tops and that's enough to get himself a double kill now getting those back-to-back -back ones wants to get another one seb on the run up the hill where's the support no tell can't do anything he's got 10 stick charges but not enough well any support to really do anything more it's a straight back out now from from og to be honest i thought that was going to go worse for them and that Honestly, went pretty Toby, bad. <laughs> this is this is not the same Thompson of TI who was single-handedly moving around, like just owning games with his Monkey King. Think about the kind of start he had. He was like level six when mid one was level four because of the rotation that mid one made to you know win secret their side lanes and such. He was able to get ahead both in net worth and levels, but he wasn't able to utilize that to move farther ahead. He's actually been you know dying in some of these team fights. You know a fight like that, he overextends himself. Mm -hmm. You know thinking that he's going to be able to chase down Yaps or and such gets caught, uh, you know, what was initially an okay fight for OG turns bad. It just, it's sad to see because I think part of the problem is that he doesn't really have a support to work with so much. Oracle is, yeah, he's a defensive hero in the laning phase. He can be pretty offensive because of his heavy amount of nukes, but when it comes to moving around and getting these like jungle ganks and stuff, it's not a support that really enables you too much. And, and neither is Coddle. So he doesn't have somebody to work with so much. And, just a non-stop control. Everything they got over on the Lime Seal, but then again, maybe they popped too much Team Secret. They really wanted that kill, and this will allow Seb to move forward. Crush could be stolen. Yapso wants to come in and send a little bit more time, holding the slider in position, allowing mid one just a spirit jump forward, but another crush out. Jurex, the pop rubber lifeline over on the side. The slider fist, the damage is half decent, but OG are back to their tier one tower. This is the first time we've seen Team Secret engage in, and they didn't get an instant kill. And in fact, they're wasting more time. Now Thompson's getting a little bit more space on bottom and OG lose nothing of value. A it's little Jirax. bit, but I'm not even sure if OG's gonna be able to maintain enough control to keep this tower alive. And when you lose that offlane tower, you start losing a little bit of control of your offlane jungle, which has those critical ancient camps. As, you know, it's just overall oh, a pretty that's important real nice tower. He knew Thompson was going to try and farm up the wave, so he actually timed his torrent perfectly to connect onto Thompson, who's going to go into the Wukong command, begin his TP out, but that's not enough armor to survive. He'll end up falling. 
Yeah, what'd you and say after that down fight, they... Toby? It was like, oh, space for tops, and he's getting some farm. Immediately dies after that. And it yeah. feels like that's been happening this entire game, that Thompson just, you know, keeps on dying in some of these engagements, looks for what he thinks is a pickoff, and Secret are actually more grouped up than he expects out of them. He just doesn't have a support to be able to work with in that regard. And I don't yeah. know, it's just a rough game for a Thompson monkey. He's moving everywhere on the map to try and find his space, but... I guess, is this what everyone's been talking about with OG, is the analysis of what's the difference between not having Anna and having Anna? The fact that Anna and Thompson just seem to have this really great sync of nuke and control, and sometimes they both had this, like, crazy control with the cause, and what is a lifestealer, how is he meant to sync with the rest of OG? Is I mean, I think it, it's also the snowballing nature uh, and, like, the tankiness and such that is currently in the meta doesn't quite fit into what Thompson wants to be able to do with his Monkey King, where, you know, he's single-handedly going from mid, and, you know, I see these rotations so many times. He goes deep into the enemy jungle, finds the carry that's farming up neutrals. Like, that's the Thompson that you expect to see who snowballs off these pickoffs. But here, against a secret team that's playing, you know, a lot of three, four, now full five-man, uh, he just doesn't have those opportunities. You want to talk about tanky? You talk about also in, in the, uh, like, you can't even fight into this. Rubik's just fit, finished a Lotus Orb by 18 minutes into the game. Like, <laughs> We always expect Yabsaw to have an insane amount of money whenever he gets his Rubik, but he's walking around with Rage Level 4 and has this Lotus Orb. They can't stop Puppy. Uh, he'll get his ulti off, he'll be the enabler for mid one to be the wars of front lines. Jirex has already burned his false promise, just trying to stay alive underneath his own tier 3 tower when the tier 2 tower is still kicking. Yeah, I, one of those big things is that the... Uh, like the corrosive haze, just being able to focus someone down, you've got the Lotus Orb to be able to counter that. So even OG is like one comeback of being able to get uh, eventually a Blink Dagger for Seb. I'm guessing he's trying to finish up the Cringent Guard first, and, which again is full meta right now. Don't focus on the initiation app, focus on the team fight. Focus it's, on the it's team high fight ground defense, right? Wants. Like this is the only way OG delayed it also this helps game. With that, yeah, and it'll also help. Maybe that's where we should start. Stop taking our mindset, uh, unless they could find this kill over on Nisha, oh. but already Slitter and Crush will not connect, Nisha just doppelgangers it off, and luckily you'll get that back up again, the power of Chakra Magic, just reducing that cooldown time. You know, we keep, uh, like, Gold for my chest. One wave, way too many. They came under the cover of a smoke. He's got Observer and Sentry down, so he feels comfortable. And then TP out in the tree line. Spirit jump forward. You'll see him. And ooh! Searing chains do not <laughs> He got control him. Chains. Wait, he did, but back yes, at base? he was searing chains, but he was back in base. It was one of those classic frame perfect. They're going to go for Zai. Right underneath the Wukong command. No TP support to arrive for this. And Zai's going to drop down on Willy. Yavsor, he has the false promise. He stole false promise, which is keeping Zai alive. Just a little bit longer. There's still no TP support coming in. And they do not have the nukes available to... Uh, okay, no. Yeah, goodbye, Yavsor. <laughs> and it's all a Wukong command. Sure, why not? But it's more style than anything else. Fiend script. 
Monkey King, Thompson walked in, but the Willow Wisp is down, so Puppy is a double slap down, actually catching mid one in the back line, tries to slide a fist, dodge it, and it'll be ILTW who's now getting two kills. I feel like I'm watching an Alliance game. OG have now created and have now been able to achieve a large amount of space, thanks to Team Secret. Yeah, that was a weird domino effect, right? It's like the Kunkka is definitely picked off. Sure, we have this cute little, you know, false promise play, but you don't have any heals to back it up, so the Kunkka's still dead. Yapsor ends up dying as a result, and then you see this rotation from the three other three members of Secret. They move like they're almost going to fight into OG. It's only Puppy who ends up taking that fight by himself with just a Fiend's Grip. I don't know. It was a little awkward. It's, it's, OG. The, it's the dream right for OG, though. You, yeah, ju exactly. you just finished Radiance. You wanted to have that fight. The only thing they didn't get was Roshan. Yeah, you've got a nice little peek now. Uh, you've got a power spike in your lineup if you could finish up that blink dagger for seven unfortunately he's just a bit behind in net worth but once he does get that uh, blink dagger they'll have like a really sick if they can actually get it blink crush onto the pl you know put that corrosive haze on him they'll just be able to burst either the ember spirit or the pl down very quickly uh but they need that blink dagger badly they're smoking they're looking for an, for an opportunity puppy's coming in underneath an observer ward he planted down his own his own observer ward a little bit further to the north Venetia's in the neighborhood as well, so jump forward. He doppelgangers in, but they really want to kill off Puppy. They have got target number one as the count of the team secret, and they're taking some time to do it. Finally, it will be able to happen. Venetia, mid one, and Zai all running into the back lines. They're focusing on Jirax. He'll false promise. They'll take him some time to finish off the kill. Instead, it's going to be a three man stun thanks to the boat. But OG, they're back out. They've done Thompson. Will finally commit the Wukong's command, but he dives instantly after. Thanks to mid one jumping forward, but it's ILTW who's doing so much work on this lifestealer. Team secret. Secret aren't trying to kite him, they just walk straight up to him and allow the life stealer to punch in another control. Nisha goes down, he had two seconds on his doppelganger, dead for 60 seconds on this Phantom Lancer. They cannot keep the chase going, however. Zai will walk back underneath the tier two tower, but the ping quickly comes onto Roshan. And that's the danger of these power spikes, right? It doesn't matter how well Secret played that fight, how well Zai played it, in particular with that three-man boat that he actually managed to land. It didn't matter because, honestly, OG with that Radiance timing, they're just very strong right now. It's tough to win a team fight, and this is a dream. OG, not going to get, like, the fastest Roshan in the world, but still 25 minutes. Uh, they'll be able to parlay this Aegis into taking, that you know, hopefully a couple of Tier 2s. Observe what was planted down by Notel. He's getting Fiend's Grip up already. They have to come out and try and fight him. They need that Willow Wisp to help out, but that's why the jump down and the Willow Wisp combining with a slap from Thompson and the Illuminate. Team Secret, a large amount of damage early on. They're underneath the Radiance Burn too, so Team Secret back underneath their own shrine. They'll feel more confident here, but maybe they don't. They're walking back off, but Puppy completely isolated, down for 32 without buyback available. They'll even claim the 25 minute bounty runes for this effort from OG and then back into Roshan. Secret. How long until that uh, that Coco's rum for Kunkka? Fifteen seconds. I don't think they can fight without that. Like they can fight without the bane, maybe, but they have to have that big team fight uh, from the Kunkka. So they're gonna have to give up this Aegis. They're keeping close tabs on mid one, but yeah, Team Secret have no desire to try and contest this. In fact, OG are leaving ILTW inside the pit to finish for a shot, and we're already trying to hunt the Ember. But it won't happen. Nisha pushes the bottom and more space gets created. Have you seen this build from uh, from Thompson? What do we got? We got Echo as well as the Maelstrom. Interesting little swerve, right? You don't see a whole lot of Maelstroms on Monkey Kings. He picks this up. The Phantom Lancer, obviously, it's a very nice item. Is it also like that way to, to do re like almost recovery farm or the ability to keep up? A little bit, yeah, sure. It's, it's definitely a farming item, sort of, but... It, I think it will actually have a very large impact in your team fight. If you can get on top of the Phantom Lancer, you have your Wukong's command now. You're just getting lots of lightning procs everywhere. See Thompson. This is, again, not <laughs> not the normal game for him, where yeah. he's usually able to be so dominant mover on the map. You can see how many times he's died in this game. Yeah, it's all, it's all the death marks. It's yeah. eight, eight deaths in total. He's gone three, eight, seven. It's not what Monkey King wants, but at the same time, like, does it feel like Team Secret now don't have the ability just to break OG's will? Instead, it's going to be OG jumping in. Thompson just straight into the Wukong's command. He wants Nisha, and he's having a hard time getting out of the command. ILTW just stays right on the back of him. And it's now a 6-1-5 Lifestealer, who's the one who's just having the time of his life. Seb's got the Blink Dagger you were requesting. Mid one. 
Oh, locked in for a moment. He's slider fisting just to try and buy a little bit more time. Seb jumps up. Thompson, he's just, oh, wow, the play. <laughs> Big one into that. the trees. No way it disjoint the follow. And now Seb can finally get the cross up. Now catch mid one of the trees. He was spiritless. And they will find the kill. And Team Secret very much on the back foot. OG. Is, <laughs> is, is this now actually old school OG? Hey, we're behind in the early game, but it doesn't matter. We hit that 20 minute mark and things go right. I mean, this is definitely their time where they're supposed to be dominant. So I'm not going to get my hopes too far up that OG is just going to easily clean out this game. Secret definitely have uh, a lot of game left still in them. There's still plenty of towers to go. You know? Yeah. So. But it's, it's yeah. definitely looking great for OG. Hey, like, it, this is a great recovery. They still got two and a half minutes on the Aegis. Uh, I love the way that they just spread out real quickly. They're trying to, to keep all the lanes pushed in. That they can go back to five manning once the cores of Ember Spirit and Phantom Lancer are still up. That's how you impede their progress. Seb's in trouble. Yapsaw's just been playing with him for the moment, but Seb, okay, they will put the Willow Wisp down. Seb will get a little bit of extra time to get the cross shot. That's what they're trying to buy time for, and then in comes Thompson. A perfect jump, combining with a blinding line and the radius. It's difficult to get any kind of damage, and mid one into the back lines. He wants it with a false promise from Jirax. Nice. It cancels it off, so mid one knows he can't get anything more. But back to the rest of the team. Zai's gone down. Thompson will be the trade-off, but ILTW, he gets the big one. Phantom Lancer down for the count. That count can be reset. Buyback is available, but Seb stays on the aggression. Once mid one, but he will not claim him. I mean, Secret, they just seem convinced that they can go back into these fights. Like, we lost the last one, but this one we're going to be able to take. This time around, hey, we're starting with this pickoff and this Slardar. Everyone TP to the Shrine. We're going to get it. But the thing is, the OG had already planned that out, right? I was saying they split up real quickly. Hey, these cores are dead. Split up. We're going to push in all the lanes. And as soon as the cores are coming back up from Secret, they are all, they're already moving across the map. They're already trying to group up together because they know that Secret can't take the five on five against them. So as long as they don't let these picks happen, then they're good to go. So how does Team Secret change the tempo? Because at the moment, it looks like OG's claiming everything they want, and Secret's playing into the hands. Does so Secret turn this into a split push game with the PL and, and Ember? Yeah, I think they just need a little bit more time for this Phantom Lancer to get that heart, right? Like, once he has that big upgrade in HP, this AOE damage that comes out for the Radiance, that comes in the Maelstrom, it's going to be a lot less impactful on the PL. You're more likely to be able to see him survive through that initial burst as well, be able to get off his doppelganger. Oh, the jump forward. They thought they're chasing after Yapsaw, but they'll get Puppy instead underneath his own shrine. Nietzsche jumps forward looking for Notel. Glimmer Cape will protect him for the moment. And ILTW after Zai trying to force him back to Fs. has just been a full on split. Still a one for one trade off this year. X does go down to Nisha. Maybe a little bit more as uh, a little isolated is going to be that life steal. Seb wants to help him out. A blink crush forward, controlling up Zion Thompson with a Wukong. Jumps down from the trees. The Absol wants to throw him back out of it. Looking to cancel off the Wukong command. It will matter because now Nisha feels more confident just to run in there. But now no doppelganger available for three seconds time. If they can find the kill with the Phantom Rush, buys him time all the way back to Seb the Willow Wisp. But a doppelganger away into safety. Nisha on 60 HP. He'll survive through this through beautiful play, but will it be enough? Up. It's a slept up life stealer. Seb will also ca catch the torrent. Yapsaw wants to hold him at the tier three towers, combining with the Fiend Gripper Puppy. But no, you've got Oracle. He knew it was coming. That's why he's the Oracle, saving his core. Yeah, but look what's happening in mid. You already have this mid one Ember Spirit. He's cutting the waves. Like, this is what he needs to be able to do. Secret, like, in order to win straight up fights they have to like kind of draw them out they have to bait out like rage they have to be able to burn out some of the mana of these heroes oh, Seb. not where he wanted to be picked up thrown back down again into the torrent of zai he's got a lot of move for speed thanks to being on water but x mark spot's gonna pull him straight back and in fact they've already found the kill on pup from puppy pick off like that that'll definitely give secret a lot more time Secret just need to be able to do this combination of split pushing with their Ember Spirit and Phantom Lancer, but still being able to like put a little bit of pressure on OG uh, to take certain fights, like the way that they tried to do it. You know, the Phantom Lancer gets to the back line, just blows up this Oracle. They try and burn away that Life Stealer's mana. Unfortunately, part of the problem with that last fight uh, was always going to be like the Aegis was still up on the Life Stealer. BKB now finished for the Ember Spirit will give him a lot more clearance to aggressively shove in waves. You got the same over on Thompson, finish his own BKB. A lot more difficult for Team Secret to control him now. Do you already see Team Secret making that move into that northern side of the Radiant Jungle? Getting Observer Wars down. Roshan's still a minute 40 away, but uh, they can't allow OG to have an Aegis the board. 
fill for the Rubik. The only being completed, it's always like one of the biggest things, itemization, when you're uh, the last pick Phantom Lancer, this has happened so many times, so many different metas, is that you're like, well, shit, we don't have a great answer for him, but our best answer is always gonna be itemization. You know, these melee cores that don't have natural cleaving mechanisms, they pick up these uh, Mjolnirs and Radiances and stuff like that, and OG, I mean, they're doing a great job. Like, I can't believe they bounce back as well yeah. as they did from Secret. When I see an advantage like that, 6,000, especially when you have a Phantom Lancer who I feel is kind of like, is going to be the biggest core at some point in time in this game, mm -hmm. then I'm looking at it and I'm like, damn, Secret is gonna handle this game. But they bounce back really well from OG. They're continuing to control the game well. Again, I really wanna mention the fact that of how the way that they played five man when they needed to, they made sure not to get into uh, situations where cores are being picked off too often. They are losing a bit of their map control now as, you know, again, Secret with such strong split pushers and yeah, Phantom Lancer and Ember Spirit. PL and, PL and Ember could do so much, and, and ganking them appears to be almost impossible as well because they're so maneuverable. Yeah. But it's going to be one of those games, it's like yeah. playing against a Tinker where you just like are always trying to chase that one hero. Once you do pick them off, great. Then you the game will very quickly transition into you hitting a high ground and forcing a buyback and then you've got an actual win condition. But this is going to be kind of the slog that you go through as a team when you're matched up against a team pushing you. I love this from Team Secret. Like, we're talking about OG looking for this pickoff, and Secret like, okay, we're going to dangle. We're going to dangle mid one in front of you and see if we can get a nibble. Yeah, that, it, you start establishing patterns, right? It's like, oh, they're just running around trying to catch these heroes. What happens when we smoke up behind one of these heroes? Right, they're gonna be a little split maybe, they're playing a little sloppy, they're not moving around the map together as much as they were because they're just trying to catch someone. That's maybe where, where we catch them with their pants down. Maybe that's where we catch them in a three versus five scenario. Oh, they're than really five going five. in, that blink crush and uh, damage. It will be enough to get through Puppy. Not exactly the target they were looking for, but they can come back and with a sentry ward, they've already deep watered the observer and sentry of secret that allowed them to understand that OG were right behind them. Yeah, this is just more time. Phantom Lancer, who's now building into a Scotty, big another big stat item to follow that heart. Is this still gonna be enough? Like like Monkey King is still insanely strong. That in the level twenty five, yes, I I do think yeah. it will. But um there is also a very important level twenty five talent for the Slardar, Cross of Haze becoming un undispellable, will actually be really good to be able to keep track <laughs> of this Phantom Lancer no matter how much he's doppelgangering. Um but generally, the, the Slardar uh, Lifestealer duo, like, their peak is going to be about this point, where you've got the level 3 Rosa Pays soon, you've got this evasion, this natural evasion talent for the Lifestealer, so it feels like he's impossible to focus down, he's still doing a lot of you know, just general damage, a weave, radiant, procs. It's huge fight time. OG have started up Roshan, Team Secret want to try and contest this and they're smoked up. They'll move around the back, their Observer Ward already saw a hell of a lot, but Roshan's dying very quickly, 4k life, mid one. We'll have to fly to fits to get a little bit of information, able to get the Syrian Chain and the target connects on Lifesteal, the Fiend's Grip, even better, over on Slardar, but the three man down from Thompson, opens up the back, combining with the Wukong's command, Team Secret, they are caught on the stairwell, Zai can't get himself away, Yamsaw wants to help out, but two core is dead, and they haven't even found the support, finally no Tal will die with the help of Yamsaw coming in. But Roshan goes the way of OG. Cheese onto Topson. Aegis on ILTW. And they're looking to go straight down the mid. In fact, Topson's already there. He gets a slap down onto the Rubik. Side of Fist and Chains buys a little bit more time. Remember, he's got the cheese. He wants to be aggressive. And that tree dance, he can go so far, so fast. I love the confidence that OG played that Roshan. Because if you looked at it from their vision, they didn't see four heroes. But it didn't matter. They saw the one hero that was important. They saw Phantom Lancer in bottom lane, and they kept track. They knew he didn't have a TP. So they were like, okay, if he's all the way at the opposite end of the map, we can take this Roshan very quickly. Speaking it doesn't even PL, matter if there's four minutes. They're looking to jump. Blink, crush. They get the amp, the amp up on Nisha. He's got Doppelganger available going up to Jirax. The false promise will end up protecting him. Nisha really wants to find this kill, but Thompson arrives. Four players from OG. Nisha, they couldn't kill him before. He's still got Mana Style available. And damn, he's so tanky. Through that hard. Even with it available, finally they bring him down. Secret immediately going into the pickoff scramble. So what happens like when one of your cores, your big cores gets picked off and you know you can't take a team fight, you've got supports, cores, whoever, whoever they can are running down a lane as quick as possible because the whole point at that point is, is your team is you're just trying to buy time for your core to come back alive, hoping he doesn't buy back to defend the base. So you're just trying to shove waves in. 
quick as possible too. Yapsur does it at mid, mid one, still pushing in that top lane, but OG just relentless. They are just sticking together, running down heroes nonstop with this Slardar. Now they're gonna be able to take the tier two, another pick off like that, and we could be saying Rax is pretty easily. Yep. They're gonna try and force that buyback now out of the Phantom Lancer. That does happen, great. They're Back all there. Up. Pick him up, throw him down, Tarrant. Remember, the Agassi model will protect the life seal of Fiend script from Puppy B. Could be very early in, and Seb able to get the double stun on both Puppy and Yamsaw. They're staying in the back lines, looking for extra crushes. Can he actually hit one in towards mid one? It's just Life Stealer breaking free and walking it off. They couldn't get the buyback out from Phantom Lancer, however. That's a very important hold for OG. They even kept their tier three alive, so it's not even like uh, OG can back off and just go and take Shrine. Yeah, so really important that Secret were able to keep that. They said they just take the last remaining out of tower on bottom lane, OG. Their team Secret still not not feeling trapped inside their base, but OG sitting on the edge of it. You know they kind of want to hunt, but what does what does Secret do now? They got a smoke over on Yamsorf, so if they want to try and fight, they can come out and get it. But you also are rapidly approaching these 25s. What do you got on Live Stealer? You can see this model at top lane. Oh, he walked in, Seb. Missed the crush timing, so Puppy doesn't die instantly, but it won't matter when Chirax is able to find the nuke. Thompson, a very early Wukong command. Want to try and find his opening, but Seb finds it instead. Triggers the BKB, goes out the Yapsir, and Thompson straight to the back lines. After Zai, he's got the four stack up already. What's he beating into that Kunker? Two heroes down, both the supports of Seeker without buyback available, but they have to deal with the PL. Willow whispers down, Nisha with the doppelganger away. Thompson able to get the slap down, and they've got the control, but no, Mana Style, Nisha needs more time. He's trying to move through the tree lines, set up towards the air. Doppelganger is now off cooldown, but he needs to jump up the hill and away. Ooh. Mid woman's there to help him out with the searing chase. They couldn't keep the chase going. Nisha barely survives, but survive he does. They're going to get a bit of time to hit this tier three, but sadly with that Phantom Lancer staying alive, what's going to happen is he's going to heal and then he's going to start throwing illusions at these heroes and burning through the mana. And they're, I'm not sure if OG is going to feel super comfortable going for the full out set of racks. They're also got to worry about this. They don't want to stick around too long. They've only got yeah. a minute left on that Aegis the Immortal. The cheese was already burnt. But the this... way Seb plays, I love watching <laughs> Seb play uh, offlane initiators, man. Like, he is he's fearless. Like, he really leads his team to take fights that are sometimes could be difficult. You know, he's just willing to go and dive into that high ground. And... Mm -hmm. I love that position from Zai. There's a couple of positions on the map that you can actually hide yourself inside of walls. And he was doing on the edge. So all I see is this slight corner of his shoulder. Yeah. And and that's all that's all you get. And he has a sentry ward, so he knows there's no observer ward looking from up up on the high ground. Difficult for OG to instantly know where he is to counter initiate. And puts him in a great position for a boat. There's actually another one on uh on, on bot lane. You can actually put yourself inside the wall, uh entering the entering the base. I'm sorry, it's a tech Going back for it's a techie spot. For Shadow Blade. Is that why you know it, Toby? It's actually exactly. it's a techies thing. What, whatever gets you in range for Ether Lens Blast Off, that's actually uh -huh. why I know it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Blink Tiger for Yapsur, one of the things is if he could steal that Will O Wisp, they just need some extra team fight on the side of Secret. Yapsur would do it. It would be easy mid one. There's a catch up on top lane, but the slide of fist lasted too long, Seb. Thought he was going to hit the right crush timing. The mid one, very, very defensive spirit. You also like his Orchid build? Yeah, Orchid like, who's into he, Bloodthorn. Who's he actually looking for as a primary target? Like, is, is it to stop that save that keeps coming in from Oracle? Yeah, I mean, it would definitely allow them to be able to hunt down these big team fighting supports because it's so hard to just go on one of these cores uh, when there's a Will-O-Wisp as well as a False Promise save. Like, both of these, uh, both of these ultimates are great at being able to peel yourself off of a team fight where they're just trying to focus down force. So if he can get to the back line, there's also maybe a situation where he managed to get the silence onto the life stealer to prevent a rage. Uh, they have to go for the Lincolns first. That is uh, currently on a life stealer. I, I'm loving this build uh, for Monkey King, the last one. He's got a he's got a, uh, a rapier queued up in this Monkey King. <laughs> Rack up the damage. Maybe okay. a little bit too over aggressive, but it's the first game of ESL1 Katowice. Sure, why not?
We got we got OG. We'll, stand, we'll see whether or not he actually it. holds to it. You know, maybe it's one of those things where he just has it in his quick buy and he's talking to his team like, should I get a should I get a date on his team? It's, or it's what's like, going hey, on? hey, Notal, hey, Notal, do you agree with this or do, do I just honor this and just ignore what you say? I'm just, I'm just gonna do this. Hey, we got the doppelganger uh, cooldown now. That level 25 talent is pretty mm -hmm. crucial for Phantom Lancer. That never. Really curious to see if he actually does go for this uh, Shadow Blade. Oh, slap down coming towards the top lane. Supports there. Yep, saw very quick with a jump forward. Finding space for Nisha. He can doppelganger again in one second time. Exactly what he does. Thompson goes into the Wukong command very deep inside the base. He doesn't have a lot of room to move back for him. He's, actually, he's just standing on the edge of the line. Now he'll move back out of it and Team Seek will feel confident to fight. They look towards the Lifestealer. He's awkward up. He can't rage. He can't fight just yet. But that's why they make him Disco Lifestealer. Beyond your effect just surrounds him and Team Seek will think twice about engaging. They're still inside their base, still feeling slightly comfortable. Yeah, it feels like these two teams, they're like... OG definitely still has an advantage in the team fights, but Secret can win this. And, and the way that OG's gonna win it is gonna be able to, you know, fast burst down a hero where they get on top of somebody and they take him out. The way Secret's gonna win it is playing off this high ground defense and like playing off of the Phantom Monster Illusion, slowly burning through somebody, or being able to get a pick off one of those defensive supports that we were talking about that are so crucial. It's, it's why OG is able to play so furiously with like Seb and with Thompson there in that last one where he just jumps for it because he knows Jerex has got his back mm -hmm. if there's going to be four heroes running down the, the hill from Secret. I love this confidence. Uh, uh, this is the understanding from Nisha. He's going into this fight with um, with uh, the dust on him. He could have easily bought an ultimate orb as he walked past the Secret Shop. Mm -hmm. This could have had more stats on this level 25p. I was like, nope. I will be the reveal for the team. The rest of OG is just avoiding the fight. Roshan will respawn in 10 seconds time. It's a nice fast Roshan for them. And this feels like deja vu cap. Team Secret, they're hovering around the Southeast side. Roshan can spawn up and just bounce in and claim him. If they look, but they have to look. It's an eight second rage too. Global. Yeah, you, I, I, I know you want to see this, JJ. <laughs> he, ne he never lets these globals go. And that's why, they loaded, that's why they load us up to then send it back. So we've got another. <laughs> <laughs> this, this doesn't look as impressive, though, when it comes back. It always sucks playing Ember Spirit uh, against this Oracle because what happens is you always have to jump to your defensive spirit. The moment he gets his Q on you, because if you just go back to the spot you were at and you get locked down for even a second, then you know there's going to be follow up stuff. All right, so Team Secret are fully aware that Roshan's going on, but they do not take the fight. They are backing out. They are not contesting in any way, shape, or form. It's the Dire Observer Ward. OG weren't hiding it. They were walking around in front of the pit. So now Aegis, Cheese, and you have the Refresher Shard, and they've given that one over to Topson. We'll see Seb if, we'll see if we can see. I love it when, when initiators go something like this, right? Besides, yeah. I, because you already have, like, your entire job is just to be able to jump out, find this Ember Spirit or this, uh, this Phantom Lancer. Well, they need the controller for the PL. I, anything to stop him from doppelgangering. Whoa! Yapsaw. Stolen Rage just lets him get back out this one. ILTW already used his own Rage. And they're looking for the crit. Looking for any kind of extra damage into the life sealer, and maybe they do find their opportunity. The hit down, Thompson saved by the false promise. Now gonna go into the Wukong command as everyone tries to back up. Puppy slowed down, but Team Secret, they do get back into their base. But Seb, he's chasing after mid one further towards the north. It won't happen, however. In fact, they just turn around looking for their own fight. A double torrent, but then the IO is right on top of, t on top of OG. They can fight inside the protection that it offers, not to mention that second Wukong command. Thanks to the refresher shot, but the one who's stranded on the wrong side of the tracks is Nisha, surrounded by four heroes of OG. He's got a little bit of support, and thanks to Doppelganger timing, he just keeps jumping away, and Yapsaw protecting him with that Lotus Orb. You've got the implication. Now they can finally take care of Puppy. He'll go down for the count, and Thompson, the protection, he actually tried to dodge it with the mischief, turning the attack in towards Zai. He's got a little bit more distance. The side of Fist Searing Chains can't control enough. There's buying more space for Nisha in the back line. Zai trying to get up the hill. He'll go down. Buyback survival instantly committed. They need to find this kill over on the monkey king he doesn't have the Aegis, the immortal they want to bring him down he's just doing the work this is just pl action while mid one supporting casting from the back lines another great control do they have enough seb's about to fall as well here he goes thompson and seb is down and iltw the life stealer he almost feels alone but he's not jurax is still there with him looking for any kind of control on desire it's been a bloodbath the lotus orb will send it back nisha he wants to try and fight won't find iltw and Jurax will just Shadow Blade himself away.
What a beast Jerex was for that fight, man. It all starts with them going on to Thompson, right? False promise. He got two different false promises on Thompson in that fight. It just lasted too long. I had to say, though, it was really impressive that Secret, because think of how that fight initially started. They actually managed to get BKBs out. They managed to get Wukong's command out. Then the Refresher Shard was used. Another Wukong's command. You just see the problem with this Phantom Lance. He's just always able to get out from underneath his damage. Part of the problem was with that last little bit of the fight is they just allowed Jarex to be able to do whatever he wanted in that back line. They weren't ever able to get to him. He gets that second false promise off. He also kills Midwan, <laughs> by the way. He managed to burst him down because Midwan was limping away in that fight. Managed to get the purifying flames to finish him off. And it, look at the itemization of what Jarex has. No wonder it's so hard mm -hmm. to actually get to him because he's got not just an ether lens, not just a blink dagger, he's got a shadow blade too. Mm -hmm. And he went for the cast range, didn't want the 120 gold per minute, went for the 150 cast range. Anything you can do to just increase that range of the Oracle. Look, I, just hover over his false promise radius. It's his entire screen. He can play as far back as he wants to in these fights. And that's why Secret are having such a tough oh, time. He should just jump down. He's looking towards ILTW. Jirax is nearby. And they'll chase him up the hill. Quick little fortunes end. Nothing to follow up. That one was on bottom lane where Seb finds his own little target. Zai able to hit the bash. Support is rotating in from the live stealer. Feeds good from Pumpy. Wants to create a little bit of space for False Promise. Once again, it's there. But the back line's mid one. He actually found no tail. Sends him up and towards the air. Finds a little bit more space. Bane will go down. But this damage, not when he actually gets the Willow Wisp off. Team Secret, they're still caught inside of it. Thompson with a work on command. Mid one. He wants to back out this one. He's got defensive spirit. Able to get up to the other side of the river. Commits heavily for it. They will get themselves away, and Team Secret in defense mode now. And when you finally do, oh, we caught him. We caught the Coddle. Oh, no, there's going to be Jarex bailing him out as well. Yeah. They've got enough items. He's got the Yule Scepter to buy himself time that will o -Wisp is so hard to deal with. And they're just running through their BKB charges. I believe mid one should be pretty low Nine here. Seven second duration for the next one. They're still having a hard time getting up high ground, though. Like even yeah. when you've got Aegis, Refresher Shards, it seems like Team Secret are always coming out to try and take the fight to burn off any of these extras they're getting from Roshan before the, before they can then breach the high ground. Like, you've got the Aegis on the Life Stealer. He's moving forward. You've got the Open Wounds over on Zai. It's a good spot of Fissier and Chains, combining with Torrent Boat. And then Nisha just runs in. He wants to kill over on Slada, but no, of course not. Jirax is already there with the False Promise and the BKB from Seb. It's a low duration, but Team Secret, they're burning these timings down. That's very deep mid one, but that's why Defensive Spirits are available. Back inside the base, not allowing OG any comfort on the wall of Team Secret Space. We're going to have the full Son of Doom build coming out for the Ember Spirit soon. If he can actually get Nullifier as well as the Orchid, then now you've got defensive supports that by themselves won't be able to bail out with the Yule Scepter and such. So quickly looking for their own fight again. Now right in the back of Seb and Thompson, but they don't find him. Nisha's doing the best he can to scout with what he's got. Go back for the Blade Fury, Battle Fury, for the Life Stealer, sure. I mean, they, they were having so much trouble getting real damage on the Phantom Lancer. You don't want that, Seb. You really don't want that, Seb. He's jumping in. Oh, no, he he won't be able to get the crush off. And Yamsaw so quick with the pick up and throw down. They want the kill on mid but Space was created. Even the Lotus Orb was protecting him. Yamsaw. He's Team Secret's version of the Oracle in this game, but now Oracle on Yamsaw. They jump forward, they get the slap down. Yamsaw's done so much work, and now he's down for 80 seconds. This may be the opportunity that OG was looking for. If they find another pickoff, they will definitely go for it, but thanks to the PL Illusions, Seb could not get any kind of extra movement forward. Can just a support pickoff, though, allow OG to break the high ground? I don't think so, Toby. I it's, think this hey, Phantom Lancer is still too much. It's a Yapsol Rubik. He's always considered a core. That's true. But it's still a hard ask. Hell, the Bustle Blade soon for Nisha, so he's going to have some really great control for when he's fighting the, the Lifesteal and Monkey King, but also when he goes to, you know, one of those supports, he spots him, he can Phantom Rush him down. Just try and chain him down real quickly. Mid one's just shy of the money to pick up that nullify, but he'll have to commit his buyback money if he wants it. In the meantime, it's just push out the side lanes as much as you possibly can. Force OG to defend in some way. I mean, the best part is for OG is that they still hold so much map control. Like, it's very hard for a secret to actually get outside of their own base. 
they can still just chill out. Yes, there's going to be some item progression on Secret that's going to be a bit concerning, but you can wait it out for the next one. You can get another refresher shard for yourself. Yeah, well, you, you got 40, 40 seconds or so to have Octarine on here, Rex. Sure. Ah, uh, mid. And good initiation out. Will it be enough? The Fiend Script's there. Ember Spirit is already down. He's been very happy he didn't spend that money. But with the death of Bane, defense must come. But how fast? Fortification, buying a little bit more time, keeping the racks alive. Yep, so we'll try and do as much work, but Lifestealer, he wants to commit. He wants his Ember to force the buyback. It'll mean so much in the next team fight if Ember can't just respawn in. So they let the mid melee racks go. Tossing everything else they've got for the jump forward set. He's looking for the kill over on Rubik. They can't afford to die in mid one. He has no other choice. He has to come into this fight underneath the Wukong command of Thompson and the Willow Wisp. Nisha's in trouble. He'll jump up, but he's still in range of the IO ball. And he's pushed around. Another doppelganger and won't work. He'll go down. Mid one's BKB will allow him a little bit of protection with the PL buying back. They need to find some kills. They need to make this worth it in some way, shape, or form because OG, they're continuing the rampage. Forward in towards the Conquer. The slap down. It connects on the mid one. The Backlines and Seb's already there, but the searing change will not allow him to get the crush off. In fact, he was on cooldown anyway. Two minutes dead for Zai. That was a dieback from him. And the tier three towers will fall on top. OG, finally, they found the opening that they were looking for against Team Secret to take that top lane of Rax. And in fact, Seb just goes for more kills. Mid one jumps forward underneath the tier four towers. Team Secret, they have not enough players to feel comfortable up here not even inside their own base and not even with nisha who are level 25 pl trying to get into the back lines of og but it won't work they're losing too many players they're all gone it's gg og take game one of this two game series to kick off esl1 katowice god that was such a sick game to open up this tournament man og i mean it felt like they were they were just running around trying to get these pickouts and finally they get the really big one that scythe from Seb. I mean, how many times? This is just such an incredible story from this guy to go from like base.